A sector is like the private sector uh, or the NGO sector. It's a group of organizations, disparate organizations, that are working according to some common principles. In the private sector, the profit motive. In the humanitarian sector, uh, there is obviously the humanitarian principles that mm. underpin our work. A system, the judicial system would be an example, or the HR system. Implies coordination. Well, it implies clear outcomes, shared evidence base, clear objectives, certain metrics of work, certain methods of coordination. And I think that this distinction, uh, for those of your most committed viewers and listeners, they can read my speech at Georgetown on the 27th of uh, April, which went through this. But I do think there's an important point that the scale, nature, complexity of humanitarian need today demands that we move from a humanitarian sector of disparate but similarly motivated individuals and groups towards a system that has clear outcomes, clear accountabilities, clear evidence base that underpins it, clear cost effectiveness uh, metrics. I think there's a real challenge but a real prize in developing a humanitarian system that is adequate for the kind of problems that exist today. How do you do that? I think that you have to lead from the top. So if the out I've never been in a system where if the outcomes aren't clear you can't, and you can't measure your progress, then there's no way you're going to succeed. And there's no, so there's no humanitarian Given that 43% of the world's extreme poor live in conflict and fragile states, the need for so-called development and so-called humanitarian actors to work together is overwhelming. And clear outcomes are absolutely key to this. On health, for people caught up in uh, emergencies and conflict, for education of kids displaced by a conflict, for the protection of women and kids, and I would also argue for the income of households displaced by conflict. Unless we agree clear outcomes for all actors working in those, uh, for those people, with those people, we're not going to be able to make progress. But isn't a humanitarian outcome that someone doesn't die, that you that's, provide shelter well, for Well, that's someone? a great point, and our outcomes framework starts with stopping survival, stopping people dying. But you can't stop there when the average duration of a refugee displacement is 17 years. If you say, if I said to you, you've been displaced from uh, Washington DC and you're going to another country and we'll make sure you don't die in the next 17 years, you'd say, I want more than that. And it's not good enough to say that middle class people who are displaced by conflict have a right to more than survival. We should be saying that everyone does. So if you're a kid who's been displaced by conflict in Nigeria or Chad or uh, Sierra Leone or anywhere else, you should have an education. If you're a woman, you should have proper protection, if you're a woman or a girl. Uh, it, it, the way I would put it is we've got to think about how to help people thrive, not just how to help people survive. And that is demanded not as a matter of theology, but as a matter of fact that the 17 years average displacement of a refugee means survival is going to brew up more problems than, uh, than it solves. And we've got to move beyond a survival mentality in thinking about an outcomes framework.